Today, I'm going to talk about why I hate reptile expos. I've been going to them since 2013, and I actually started selling at them in 2018. I no longer sell at them, I no longer attend them, and I probably never will again. We'll see, but I'm going to talk about my first-hand experiences, all the stuff that I've learned, and just a lot of the bizarre things going on as to why I really do not enjoy reptile expos. Of course, this is only one region of the world, this is only one person's experiences, but I have a feeling a lot of this applies to most other expos, but it's up to you in the end. If you agree with me or not, I'm just gonna lay out all the info and you can do with it as you please. One of the first weird experiences while selling there is waking up, going to the expo in the morning, and just seeing reptiles all over the place. Of course, there's gonna be reptiles, because people are selling reptiles, but I mean literally just on the floor, running around. I've seen lizards, snakes, toads, whatever. Even under my own table, there's been a couple animals. I think it was a king snake and a, some sort of toad. Just, just chilling, because people don't secure the delis and the enclosures. Of course, this is one small mistake, but I think it's kind of a good summary of what the expos are kind of like. Because for one, you might be wondering, well, why would there be animals when you go in the morning? Like, wouldn't they pick them up? Because personally, I thought that people brought the animals back with them when they're selling like at the expo. I didn't think they left them there overnight, but as I've learned, some animals are actually in those small deli containers for upwards of five days with no food, no water, no heating, no hides, literally just in this plastic container for almost a week. That's because a lot of people travel to these expos from pretty far away and they just stay in hotels or sleep in their car. They bring the animals in their car, set them up, say Friday night if it's a weekend expo, meaning that they were driving Thursday and Friday or just Friday. So it depends of course on where they're coming from. And then first expo day, Saturday, they're in the deli all day. If they don't sell, bring it over to Sunday, they still don't have anywhere to put the animals. So they simply sit in the delis over Saturday night. Sunday, if they still don't sell, they're still in the deli. <laughs> um, by the end of Sunday, they then pack the animals up, put them in the car. They're still in the same delis, so it's no different. And then drive back either Sunday night or Monday morning. So of course it varies person to person. Me, when I was selling, I'd literally bring all the animals back because we were local and would just drive to and from the expos at the ones we were selling at, and it was easy enough to put them back in the enclosures. Other people probably do bring them back as well, and others are local too. So they might only be in the delis for one, two, or three days, but there are definitely those sellers that are not afraid to keep them in the containers for upwards of a week. And not just that, but they're moving expo to expo sometimes. Some people's living is literally just driving to and from different states, just shipping these animals back and forth with them in the back of their car. So what do they do with them in between? I haven't seen that firsthand, but we can probably guess what the animals are up to chilling in their delis. Again, this list is kind of random. I literally just typed up like all the stuff that I remember happening and one is convicted felons. There seems to be this weird pattern where animal abusers end up selling reptiles. I don't know why. I've actually bought from one myself. I didn't know until afterwards. I bought a ball python for a breeding project that ended up never happening. Turns out the person I bought her from actually was convicted for animal abuse, not charged, but convicted and was sentenced. And still they were able to sell reptiles. They did have a couple little requirements here and there because they were on probation, but this was somebody that was found uh, in their house with dozens and dozens of dead ball pythons and other snakes stuffed into pillowcases rotting just in their basement. There's articles on it. I'm not gonna drop any names in this video of any specific expos or sellers, but hopefully you'll take my word for it. It's up to you, of course. And this same person was back selling animals once again, and it turns out I got a ball python from them. There are many others who I've found confirmed articles, confirmed sentencing, all this stuff, because most of it's public online if it's, you know, criminal related stuff. A lot of people literally just start convicted for animal abuse and then they're selling reptiles at expos. There are rules when applying for an expo, like you can't do this, you can't sell this, you can't sell this. Everybody reads the rules, everybody gets the rules. Not many people necessarily follow the rules, and there really aren't many guidelines or standards you have to reach, like if you are a convicted felon. Personally, I haven't seen there to be much screening at most expos, and I've been to expos owned by different companies, so this isn't just one specific company, but uh, different ones that I've seen, and it seems to be pretty consistent. So that was kind of interesting to learn. Some of the other rules people don't follow is it used to be a rule at one where you're not allowed to sell turtles. I think they ended up removing this rule, but 
there were turtles for sale everywhere. Nobody that really staffed it seemed to do anything about it. They didn't really kick people out necessarily. I never saw that at least. They kind of just let them do whatever they want. But oh, well, they, we have these rules here, so it's not really our responsibility. I, I don't know if that really applies, but it's what they do and it, they got away with it no problem because nobody there really cares necessarily. Uh, so just little things like that. There are the rules, but they're not really followed. However, the rules that are actually enforced are exclusivity with certain companies. So for example, one of the expos I went to, you're actually not allowed to sell rodents or feeder insects because they were partnered with companies that had full exclusivity to selling at the expos. You might think, oh, well, this is kind of monopoly-ish. I mean, not really, because you don't have to buy a, a thing at the expo. You can leave the expo and go buy it somewhere else. But within the place itself, you're oftentimes not gonna see certain things for sale, except from a single person or a single company. Unfortunately, I have bought from these and the quality control was pretty bad. And I've reviewed some of these rodent companies that you can find on my channel. If I were were some of these expos that were partnering, I would definitely find different companies, but I don't know how they pick them. Doesn't seem like they really care which have the best quality, but I could be wrong there. That's just my thoughts. A little bit about the reptiles at the actual expos. Something kind of interesting is some of them are actually literally just from Craigslist and stuck on a table. You might be thinking, but wait, isn't that how you started selling reptiles? Yeah, if you don't know, um, the way I started selling them is I would go to Craigslist, find animals that need new homes, and then pay people for the animals, take them and do any necessary rehabilitation or simply keep them for months until they look perfect and I learn as much about them as possible. Then I would sell them and if anyone asks, I'd be honest about where they came from. So you can have your opinions about that, no problem whatsoever, but it's been confirmed because I've talked to some of the sellers who have said that they literally bought animals from Craigslist that week or that day and just stuck them on the table. They also just buy them from other various sources wherever and stick them on. So just because you see a seller with an animal, it doesn't mean they bred it or raised it or anything. They might be just as new to that animal as you, which definitely brings up quality control questions. Those animals that are not from suspicious sources are oftentimes just imported or wild caught. Uh, these people pay companies or just individuals to go out into animals natural habitats and scoop them all up and collect them and either bring them to the sellers who then bring them to expos or ship them overseas to whatever country the expo is in like the United States. Say they're all from Africa like Savannah monitors is a very common one to see imported. They all just get scooped up in their habitat, shipped overseas, and then they're sold. And again, quality control is interesting with these animals. Animals. They're normally super cheap as well. You can find tons of animals at expos for like five bucks, no problem. So there's also, of course, no quality control on morphs. No matter what your opinion is on say spider ball pythons, if you think that all of them are perfect, all of them are terrible, or there's a mix, I've definitely been to expos where a lot of the spider ball pythons is an example where in my opinion, a lot of the uh, quality of lives of these animals would be better off just being euthanized, but they're being sold for 50, 100, 200, or a thousand bucks at the expos in the delis that they've probably been sitting in for four and a half days. <laughs> Something kind of funny is not, I don't know if funny is the right word, but is sometimes I'll go up to a booth and be like, okay, what do they have? And I see a deli cup and I'm like, this deli cup looks oddly similar to the deli cup from the person on the other side of the building. And also that's their sticker because although it's not common and although it doesn't necessarily matter that much, I've seen people negotiate down animal prices and then buy them and then change the price and put it on their own table. Also trades, sometimes people literally just trade around animals that day. Some of them keep the animals, others just put them back up for sale on their table. Again, it's just the idea that they don't necessarily know much about the animals they're selling. Like I said before, they might be just as new to the animal as you are. And you ask these questions about it and they'll be like, oh yeah, it's, it's great, it's healthy. Just look at it, it's, it's doing lovely. When you're interested in an animal, I think it is very important to get pretty one-on-one -on -one with it. Like say a ball python, you might want to know the temperament because even if they tell you it's chill, it might not be. Of course, there is the problem where they're in this noisy environment, so they might act differently than they do at home, which is fine. That's expected. And a lot of the people actually do say you can only handle an animal if you are very certain you're gonna buy it because they don't want them handled constantly. But then there are those other sellers that don't care at all and they have the animals out all the time. Literally over two to three day expos, the animals are constantly in people's hands, being moved around, swapped around back and forth. It's kind of chaotic. Of course, this can be stressful and I don't think it's the biggest deal ever, but people even do things like, oh, pay $5 and get a picture with this big snake over here. Just the, the cringy little things like that. It's just the animals are constantly there and they're clearly there just for profit. I'm sure many of the people do have passion for them, but many others don't and are just there to make a living and that's it, no matter how they have to do that. And part of what comes along with that is people lying 
about their animals. They are not afraid to tell you that, oh, this snake is eating frozen thawed when it's actually on live. How do you tell this? Well, for one, there's oftentimes bite marks on the snakes from rodents. Other times people will be inconsistent with information. So one person might ask and then another might ask and they might get different answers. There's just little ways you can pick up knowing that they're not being honest about it because they just want to do what they need to to get a sale. And that is oftentimes they're just literally lying about it. Uh, something on top of this is lying about the husbandry of the animals. Ideally, you know something about the animal before buying it. But even as myself, as a little 13 year old buying my first snake, they told me like, oh yeah, ball pythons, they're great for their whole lives and a 20 gallon, you just stick on a heat lamp, give them a water bowl, they're good to go. Just feed them whatever you want once a week, that's it. And that's not even that bad of an example. Other people lie way more, saying that they need drastically different things than they actually do, even just to stay alive. Whether it takes, say, a bearded dragon can just sit in an empty enclosure with no lights or whatever. I'm sure there's some out there that said that, oh, frogs don't need water. I haven't heard that one myself, but I have a feeling someone out there at an expo convinced someone that frogs don't need water. Just as an example, I don't know, probably not. <laughs> this one is not as important, but something to throw in. That is supplies is ridiculously overpriced. Obviously you're at the expo, it's super convenient. Just buy everything you need there. But if you wanna save some money, you should definitely just buy it after the fact or hopefully before the fact, like on Amazon or something, it'll be so much cheaper. I've seen prices that are doubled or even tripled on supplies from heat mats to cork to hides to whatever, lamps, bulbs just everything. The prices are hiked up so high. Now I would essentially bet my life that there is a 100% chance that every single expo has reptile mites. Maybe ticks, diseases, parasites, well, with full certainty. This has happened myself. Again, when I bought my very first snake, so I know it wasn't from any of my other animals because I didn't have any other animals, he came home and had mites. Whether it was from the seller themselves or if they were swapped around from another seller there because everyone is touching everything, someone is gonna come in there with mites and mites spread so easily. Be guaranteed that there are mites in that building. Now, when I do go, which it's been like over a year now, I don't handle anything. I don't bring my own animals and I basically just give myself an acid bath when I get home because there are 100% mites and they will happily latch onto your clothing, come home with you and give your own animals mites. Uh, it's, it's not guaranteed to happen, but I would personally guarantee there's gonna be mites in the building of a reptile expo, in my humble experience at least. People of course are there to profit, but especially profit on impulse buys. The way a lot of expos are advertised is it's literally just like big show, big reptile show, like a big sign on the outside of the building to entice anyone to come in because usually places charge 10 to 15 to 20 bucks for you to get in. So just random people that don't know anything about animals will come through and it's like a big museum. It's actually a pretty cool way to just see a bunch of animals, but these are the people that they love to really get those sales from. Basically every animal to many sellers, not all, but a lot of sellers, no matter what animal it is, it's a beginner animal. You want this? Oh, it's perfect for beginners. This is your first reptile. You'll love this. Don't mind that it's the most expensive animal on the table. This is the one for you. Because these are just a bunch of salesmen, oftentimes very sleazy salesmen who will sell whatever they can whenever. They don't care where it goes. It's definitely very hard to have quality control when it comes to sellers. After doing a couple expos, I was like, this is not good at all. It's just terrible. It's really those impulse buys, not only from the non-reptile keepers, but also from those who already have a bunch of animals. It's pretty easy if you want to get them to just buy a lot of stuff because they're there, they have their cash, and they're ready to spend it if you can convince them. So a lot of people love taking advantage of that. The animals now are probably either dead or not so great from the sellers that did that. Maybe not all of them, but that's just a guess as well. Speaking of cash in hand, there is very little to no documentation for these. And by that, I mean, when you buy an animal, a lot of people only take cash. There will pretty much always be an ATM there, so there's no problem getting cash. But it's very hard to track and trace cash payments, meaning that if you do, say, get scammed or regret buying something or have this issue with the seller, you can't dispute it with your bank and you can't report them on PayPal. And you literally have no proof. There's no receipts most of the time. There's no contact information. Some people don't even have names of their boots. It's just this person with the animals. You buy it with cash, you have no way to trace it or track it. So that's another incentive for people to not necessarily be honest. I'm sure a lot of them are because again, you might see them at the next expo or something and beat them up or whatever, but cash is hard to track. And some people do take cards and stuff, but even then it's not exactly, there's no return policy. There's no guarantees at expos. It's just, there goes your money. Here's your animal. Might never see the money again. The animal might be dead in an hour. Maybe not. 
but there's a chance. A lot of booths like to get the upper hand on other booths and vendors by saying that they're rescues. They rescue animals and they're a, they're a reptile rescue. And although some of these people probably have rescued animals, because a lot of us here have rescued an animal, whatever you want that to mean, just keep in mind that doesn't mean that they're any better than a seller. Even if they're a nonprofit, there are great nonprofits. There are terrible nonprofits. There's great for-profit companies. There's terrible for-profit companies. A rescue is oftentimes a label just thrown on and it really kind of ruins the real rescues as well because they just get muddled up and they're actually not any better or worse, but it's to me, it's a meaningless term that shouldn't really, that should basically be taken at face value and you should kind of investigate yourself and see if they really are what they claim to be. A lot of boots won't even look like established companies or sites. They'll just look like a person selling some animals. And that's usually because they literally are. Some people just bulk buy a bunch of animals and some people it's their first time keeping animals, but anyone can buy a booth. It's just first come first serve at certain expos. So, well, what stops you from doing it? Nothing. That's why they do it. So yeah, if you see a, a person who has no business cards, no name, nothing, they're just sitting at a blank fold out table with a chair with a little box for money and some random animals, there, there's nothing more special about them doing that than literally anyone else on the street doing that. So yeah. Also, people will give you just weird offers. Of course, they are a place to negotiate. It's There's no problem with that. Um, you can maybe save some money. Maybe you'll lose a little more if they're better at negotiating than you and you really want the animal or whatever, which is fine because if it's the animal you want and it's there and it's the right one for you and you have the money, then go for it. But there are just sometimes weird offers. One guy just came up to us with two Cresta Geckos and was like, you want these for a concerningly low amount of money? Us naive little selves were like, oh, sure. Yeah, here's the money. And we took the Cresties and they just seemed so off and something was not right about them. So we actually did get our money back with those. Unfortunately, of course, it would have been nice to help the Cresties, but this is when I was just starting out and really didn't have much money to play around with. So can't take responsibility for every animal. It was just one of those where probably didn't work out great for the animals, but there's been a lot of offers like that, especially at the end of expos. They'll start giving you these really low prices on these suspicious animals and it's all over the place. They're just trying to get out what they can and get these animals to no longer be their responsibility. Out of sight, out of mind, kind of. I'm Unless it's like us and we go back and we're like, give us our money back. This is not, something's off here. So yeah, just another one to throw in. There is definitely good stuff at expos. I've met a lot of really cool people there. I've met a lot of you at the expos and some of the sellers really are interesting and smart and know what they're doing and care for the animals because there was kind of a difference there that are not convicted animal abusers, <laughs> all sorts of things. There's also really good deals on, like it's a great place to get live plants for me and a good place to get certain supplies you don't see online much like cork or other bioactive supplies like insects, isopods, springtails, stuff like that. And so it's definitely not an all sellers are good or all sellers are bad. But for me, if it was just a couple bad eggs in there and a, a one snake with mites in there, I really wouldn't have an issue with them. But it's every time I go, it just seems worse. Maybe it's because I've learned more since last time, or maybe it's because it is getting worse. There'll be more imported animals, more malnourished animals, more literally dead animals, more scams, more bad deals, more bad sellers, and just more red flags all over the place because the more I go, the more I realized they're not so epic. Um, I've bought many animals myself from expos. I've gotten, like I said, my first ball python, my blue tongue skink, who I was 14 when I bought her. I later learned that she was actually imported. That's why she was suspiciously cheap for $80. That company no longer exists. Don't know where they went. They just disappeared from the internet and their literal shop locally to me just disappeared one day. So, okay, Olive's doing fine though. <laughs> and I have taken advantage of some good deals um, on animals there that I've then cared for for quite a while. And then some of which I either kept or found new homes for by selling them back for more money. So yeah, reptile flipping, it's, it's literally how I started. I have tons of videos on how I started selling, how I started keeping and all that. So you can check them out on my channel or linked below in the description. I don't think expos are all bad and I have had good experiences there. I've met cool sellers, met cool people. We already had this talk. What I'm trying to say is I don't like expos. I'm not purposefully always this negative, but it just it just kind of happens. The reptile community is interesting. Reptile sellers are interesting. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. That'll be it for this video. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.